Welcome to day eight of 21 days of fasting and prayer. I hope this day find you in good spirit and you are filled with the joy, the joy in the Lord that is a promise to strengthen us if we focus upon Jesus the Christ and what he has done for us every day. It is through him that we even have the privilege to boldly approach the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find favor in time of need. Do you need him today? I need him today, but not only that, do you want him in your life? Do you want him involved in everything concerning our lives, leaving him out of none of it? He wants to be a part of it very intimately. We should want the same. So let's get started. Day eight of 21 days of fasting and prayer. The previous three days, we talked about the word rejoice. We talked about regrouping ourselves, getting back on track on the path that, that God has set before us, even before the foundation of the universe. And we also talked on yesterday about refocus, refocusing ourselves on the Lord. Today we are going to speak on respond, respond. The core word of responsibility is response or to respond. Let me say that again. The core word of responsibility is response or to respond. To be responsible is to respond to the need that is before you and I. We must respond. That's either in word or deed. Response is a verb. It requires a reply or action to something. Like I said before, say something or do something. It requires us to make a move. And just this reminds me of an active chess game. Let me insert this disclaimer. I do not know how to play chess, okay? So I'm not coming to you as a guru of chess, but I do have some simple understanding about it. But this reminds me of an active, an active chess game with two opponents. Whoever makes the first move, the opposite opponent is required to make not just an empty move, but a strategic move. They must know all their pieces, know what their ranks are, what their functions are. Each person gets 16 pieces, you get eight pawns, two bishops, two knights, two rooks, one queen, which is the most powerful piece, and one king. They are strategically moving the piece, piece to be a solution for the good of, a, of obtaining victory at the end of the game. That one or the other will repeat or recite or proclaim the famous last words of a victor. Checkmate. Checkmate means you have brought your opponent where he has no other move. You have taken the last move. Just like Jesus the Christ, and we should be so thankful that he, the eternal living word of God, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the la life. He made the last move and complete victory over the devil. That means that the devil no longer, hallelujah, can prevail against us. Jesus Christ pronounced game over. Here are a few scriptures that we can look at to back us up before we get ready for our time of prayer. First, it is Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, and it says, Therefore, 
Since these, his children, share in flesh and blood the physical nature of mankind, he himself, in a similar manner, also shared in the same physical nature, but without sin, so that through experiencing death, he might make powerless, hallelujah, ineffective, impotent, him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and that he might free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in slavery throughout their lives. We no longer have to fear death because of the promise of the resurrection. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life no one comes to the Father but through me. Another scripture reference, I love this, how it builds you up to think that God is our source. He is the answer of our way out. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, amplified, it says, No temptation, regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance. But God is faithful to his word. He is compassionate and trustworthy, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation he has in the past and is now and will always provide the way out as well, so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation with joy. Hallelujah. That is so encouraging and so refreshing and so increasing our faith. If you really receive that, you really believe that, you really heard that there is no temptation, hallelujah, that God did not prepare a way of escape for us to move beyond it, to have the power and the ability to say no, to not yield to it or allow the temptation to overcome us, but we will overcome it with joy, not with a sorrowful head because we couldn't do it, with joy that we have been strengthened to walk past it. Isaiah 54, 17, another powerful promise from our Father. It says, no weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This peace, this righteousness, this security, and triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is part of our great inheritance as heirs of salvation. And this is their vindication from me, says the Lord. So my question to you today, as I have asked many times on different platforms and other opportunities of releasing the message of the Lord, how will you respond today? That's my appeal to you as the listener. Do you hear Jesus calling you to come out of worldliness, to come out of this worldly culture and to be ye separated unto him? Do you hear him today calling you who have backslidden to return back to him through repentance and just coming back to the Father? Do you hear him calling us upward, calling us to come higher, calling us to come deeper because he desires to commune with us. And as he did in John 4 and 11 with John, he said, after this, John said, after this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a war trumpet, wow, speaking with me said, come up here. 
and I will show you what must take place after these things. What an invitation to come to the Lord, to come into right standing with God, whether you're an unbeliever, whether you've backslidden, and the call to the church, it's time to come up so that we can hear our God and allow him to show us what is ahead of us. It also reminds me of the scripture, Jeremiah 33 and 3, that calls us to secure us in prayer when we call upon the name of our God, when we call upon God in prayer. He says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. This is letting us know we need constant communion with our Father. We need to understand that Jesus made it possible for us to move and live and have our being by the Spirit. Romans 8 make it very, very clear in our sonship that the sons of God, we are the ones that are led by His Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we are calling up on you today. We're calling upon you today knowing that you know our voice, you know our name, that this is your desire to commune with your children, that you desire to reveal things that we need to know in particular seasons from day to day that, that will help us prosper and have good success and lead us into the victory that Jesus has already overcome. We do it with great cheer today. We do it with great joy today. We rejoice in you, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we are confident that you will complete the good thing that you begun in us unto the day of Christ Jesus. Our future is bright, just as Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, and they are not to bring harm, but peace and prosperity. It is a hope and a future that he has provided for us through his son, Jesus Christ. But there are things we need to know. And Father God, we are positioning ourselves in this fast to hear from you from on high to allow us to encounter you in a greater way, for allow us to hear your word being read, read your word and study it and wait on you for the rhema, wait on you for the revelation, wait on you for the life-breathing, life-giving word we need for breakthrough, hallelujah, and freedom, continual freedom throughout our day that we know the enemy can no longer take us hostage through the fears of death and the grave. Hallelujah. Jesus took that power from him for whosoever would believe. I hope today that if you didn't believe, you will receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I hope that if you've been flat in your walk, you've been stirred up and inspired. I hope in the name of Jesus that the church will hear the cry, it is our time and it is our turn to arise and shine in a greater degree that darkness will see us brightly shining forth the light of the world. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We adore you. Have your way in us. Renew us. Revive us. Re-strengthen us. Re-establish us. Hallelujah. Recalibrate us. Hallelujah to what heaven's agenda is for this day and for the seasons ahead. We give you full permission have your way in and us, in and through us. Change us and make us more like your son, Jesus, our elder brother. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Enjoy in the Lord the rest of your day.